A common theme in our early studies of organic chemistry is learning how to classify structures as well as reactions. This helps us organize them mentally so that they're easier to recall when we need them in a later context. And this problem asks us to classify the reaction shown into one of the four categories that we see up here, a substitution, elimination, addition, rearrangement, or some combination, some complex combination of these four in which two or more processes are occurring in the reaction. So to get started with this, what I recommend as a starting point is to examine the bonds that are made and broken in the products and reactants respectively. So let's look at the products first and talk about bonds that are made. What we can see is that the cyanide anion on the reactant side has apparently formed a bond to this carbon, the benzylic carbon, in this product. And so the bond that's made, if I draw it out explicitly, is between the CH2 carbon and the carbon of the cyano group. It's this bond right here, highlighted in red. So we've made a CC bond, and if we look on the reactant side, we can ask about the bonds broken in the reactants. And here again, the only structural change that appears to have occurred is loss of chloride from the starting material. And so the bond broken here must be the carbon-chlorine bond. Evidently, then, all this reaction has done is replaced or substituted a carbon-chlorine bond for a carbon-carbon bond. As a result, we would identify this reaction as an example of a substitution. More specifically, it's an example of a nucleophilic substitution because the reagent doing the substituting, the cyanide anion, is a nucleophile. We have a similar task in front of us in this problem to classify the reaction shown as either a substitution, elimination, addition, rearrangement, or some combination of these. And again, I think it helps to look at the bonds made as well as the bonds broken to identify what's happening here and bring a little more clarity to the situation. And just as in the previous problem, it's important to draw things out explicitly, especially where we notice changes. So one thing to notice right away is that the H2 has disappeared on the product side. The two hydrogen molecules are completely gone. So something must have happened to the covalent bonds connecting the hydrogen atoms in H2, right? And it's clear that these bonds must have broken in the course of the reaction since those hydrogens have evidently disappeared into the organic structure of the product. So those are two of the bonds broken, the HH bond in the two H2 molecules. Both of those are broken. Now another thing to notice is that the product lacks double bonds between the carbons where we see double bonds in the starting material. So this double bond and this double bond have both also broken in the course of this reaction. So once again, two carbon-carbon pi bonds have broken in the course of this reaction. A subtle but important thing to notice also is that the inner carbons have picked up an additional hydrogen atom, which I'll scratch out and just draw explicitly on each carbon, like so. We can also notice that the terminal carbons that used to be involved in pi bonds with the inner carbons have picked up an additional hydrogen as well. And we can draw that out explicitly just by replacing three with two and adding hydrogens here. All four of these CH bonds that I've drawn out explicitly are new bonds in the product. So these are all bonds made. With all these written out, we can sort of draw a dividing line between the two sets of bonds made and broken and see that the same process is essentially happening twice at these two pi bonds. There's an HH single bond that's breaking, a CC pi bond that's breaking, and two new CH bonds that are forming. So just to highlight what's going on for one set of reactants, if we imagine this H2 molecule getting involved with this pi bond, we see that two new CH sigma bonds are formed on the two carbons that used to be involved in the pi bond. The pi bond is broken and the HH bond is broken. And this is a hallmark of an addition process. We describe this by saying that the two hydrogen atoms or the H2 molecule 
adds across the carbon-carbon pi bond. And this happens twice to give us the product. Keep in mind that every addition reaction fits this pattern. We have an AB molecule with a single bond connecting A and B, and a CD molecule with a pi bond connecting C and D, and the products contain A and B added to the CD molecule. That's why it's called an addition. This is a prototypical example of an addition process.